Hey YouTube and welcome back to another review here at Thomas Open where we are doing something pretty big and pretty bold and pretty requested this time. Uh, I told, I think, um, I think James over at Rampant Line Reviews has reviewed this beer himself. And when I told him I had it, he was like, can you do an English review? I'd like to hear an English review, hear your thoughts on it. Why? Stick Baggets is a Swedish brewery and although James is originally from Scotland, uh, he lives in Sweden. And he was really curious about my opinion, and uh, the English is something he can follow a lot better, of course, than the Dutch with captions. So what do we have here? It's Stick Baggett's Big Bourbon Barrel Aged Out 2019, coming in at a whopping 13.5% uh, ABV. Now, I'm thinking that this wasn't canned. I'm trying to find if I can see if I can find a canning date. It doesn't specifically say canning date, but I would say that this was probably canned in 2020 because I bought it a few months ago and that the base beer is from uh, 2019. So the, the vintage, the beer was brewed in 2019, put in bourbon, barrel ba um, bourbon barrels to age. The um, ingredients are listed as uh, water, of course, malted barley, oats, hops, and yeast. And that's it, it doesn't say anything else. Um, it doesn't say anything about, you know, what kind of, if it was a specific bourbon barrel or whatever. Uh, I like the can. I like the can art, by the way. It was by Martin Jacobson. It has just, you know, I like it. The colors, the the lion. I don't know. Looks nice. Thirteen and a half percent of big boy beer. We're doing this. I was in the mood for a big bourbon barrel aged stout. I was in the mood for a lot of it. I have one of those moments where I sometimes like to just drink a big beer and have loads of fun with it. And this sounds like it should fit the bill. Now that pours like motor oil. That pour pours like very, very freaking dark. That is one of the darkest pours I've seen on an Imperial Stout lately. A lot of them lately have been very, um, for me, very, very, very cola vibe, a very dark brown. This was nearly pitch black. This was nearly pitch black when it poured. And in the glass, well, you know, that is as dark as dark can be. The lighting here right now sucks, but this is as black as black can be. That is a gorgeous looking beer. It's got a nice thick sort of, yeah, that mocha colored, very dark, uh, sort of like a dark chocolate, not dark chocolate, but let's keep it a very dark mocha colored head with some big, big bubbles on top, some smaller ones here on the side. I don't think that's gonna last very long. We're talking about both 13.5% ABV, we're talking about a bourbon barrel aged beer. Usually those heads will dissipate pretty quickly. I'm just checking out, you know, the, the alcohol legs on this, looking good. Um, already giving a few whiffs here, so let's check out what this bad boy has uh, on the nose. Let's go. That's That's got a lovely, there's several kinds of bittering components com coming over, uh, going on there. First of all, you do get that charry note from the bourbon barrels. There's a big, heavy roasted component there. Big on your roasted malts, your, 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 your almost burnt malts, I'd like to venture. Um, it's got that sort of big, bold dark chocolate bittering component you have these roasted coffee beans bittering component there's some good whiffs of vanilla over there uh, by that bourbon some oaky notes and just this big bold incredibly strong powerful imperial stout oddly enough with 13 and a half percent and the fact that it was bourbon barrel aged i kind of half expect it to be there to be sort of a sharp tone note in that nose I'm not getting it there's there's some tannins going on from that wood just slightly not too heavy definitely a big chocolate component to this one I'm liking this this is nice mm. definitely definitely one beer that needs to breathe a little bit because in the last like one minute or so that I've been sniffing it over 30 seconds right now it's already sort of developing a little bit there's a sort of a soft coconut vibe in there there isn't any coconut added to it but with lots of those bourbon barrel aged imperial stouts I often get like a soft coconut vibe it's definitely in here almost like a sort of a roasty nutty coconut thing there's something in there yeah, you're getting a bit of the alcohol now. Now you're getting a little bit of the alcohol. This is sort of a weird... I 
There's something here that reminds me of like fresh ground coffee beans. I like it. it smells good. Let's see what she does in the taste. James, thanks uh, for uh, recommending me to review this beer. Um, not that I need any recommendations to review beer. I always like to do it, but you know, makes it fun to do this for someone. Cheers, buddy. Okay, that's that's nice. <clears throat> that's nice. There's definitely there's definitely a little bit of heat there. There's definitely a little bit of alcohol warmth. It's got that nice sort of sharpness from the bourbon in a good way. It's not uh, anything that bothers me too much. I like it. It has a good. There's oddly enough a sort of clean, fresh, sharp edge to it that I can't really explain. Other than that, it sounds weird, I know, but it kind of has it. Again, with that big, big roast, a big chocolate component. There's a sort of a licorice note there. For a second there, I thought somebody was walking up to my house, and these people are actually looking in right now. This is funny. Just a little description. Okay, so I need to really fix the studios at some point. Um, I will fix the studio at some point. So some people just could look into the living room here. I'm in my living room. And they were really looking at like, what the fuck is going on there? Why is this idiot talking to himself? And what is he looking at? Because they can see the camera and everything set up. That was funny as fuck. Anyway, back to the beer. Uh, yeah, there's a little bit of a sweet licorice component in it. Again, all your usual suspects. All your usual suspects that you would expect in something like this. There's your vanilla, there's your oak, there's your bourbon. You've got a little bit of a red fruit component. There's your chocolate. There's some coffee notes. You've got this big, bold, roasted malt thing going on. It's all there. There's no big surprise here. There's nothing here that makes you think like, wow, this is a completely new take on a Russian imperial stout that was aged in bourbon barrels. No, but it is done exemplary well. This is exactly what I would expect. Um, something like this to taste like. And what I really appreciate is that, yes, there is a little bit of carbonation, of course. Mm. Without too much. A whiskey, that bourbon is really coming through quite nicely. God, I love this. This is immensely good. This is epically good. Like, I would love to talk about this beer for hours and hours and hours. I really can't because there's not so much to say except everything I've already done. And I appreciate the fact that all of this, this is exactly what it says it should be. It's a four core imperial stout that was thrown in bourbon barrels for a long time. No bullshit, no lactose, no other adjuncts. It is exactly what I want in a beer like this. And I'm digging the fuck out of it. I like it. I, I, would, I wish I had a few more of these because this is epically good. This is definitely epically good. There's something in there. Okay, sometimes, sometimes those bourbon barrel aged beers can give me a sort of a, uh, more people looking in, hello, hi, how are you, don't, don't look at me like that. Sometimes these bourbons can have a little bit of like a, it's, it sounds weird, a bubblegum thing going on. Now it doesn't actually taste like bubblegum, but there's that connotation that I have with some of these bourbons, they've got the sort of cloy bubblegum sweetness to them. That's what I'm getting here. It has that little... This is really... And that's a good thing. So it doesn't taste like bubble gum. Don't worry. It just has that connotation. Yeah, I'm liking this. This is good. I'm going to really enjoy this for the uh, the rest of the afternoon. It's like, what? It's a quarter to four right now. It's 3.45 p.m. And there's a few viewers out there that I have that will probably be having breakfast. Just finishing breakfast by now. Oh, people from like, you know, States, Canada, some of my beer viewers over there. You guys would want this around, you know, after just after lunch, just sip over on this for the rest of the afternoon. Just crack it open and enjoy this for the rest of the afternoon. I'm really digging the carbonation here. I did a review on the Bourbon County Brown Style 2020. 
I'm guessing you're going to see that before this. It felt a little bit too overcarbonated for me, and I can, I, I don't want my big beers to be too carbonated. This is spot on. Mm. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I love the fact that this has a sort of like a sharp, clean again, like I said, sharp, clean freshness to it. Makes it very drinkable, very dangerously drinkable. Okay, yeah, you know, I don't rate beers anymore in my reviews, but this this is going to get a high rating. This is definitely high up there, upper echelon when it comes to bourbon barrel aged styles. If anybody of you, of my Dutch viewers or, you know, overseas, if you see this, go for it. Pick it up. You're not going to regret it. I love it. Love the ever-loving fuck out of it, and I'm going to enjoy this for the rest of the afternoon. And that's it for this review. If you liked it, click like. If you really liked it, hit uh, subscribe. Check out uh, the description box below for links to all of my social media, link to the Dutch Beer Collective, links to mysterybeer.nl. Drop some comments if you've ever had this beer, what your general opinions are on stick baguettes. If you've ever had anything, buy them. What are your you know general opinions on bourbon barrel-aged stouts? And I'll see all of you in another review soon. Cheers.